Don't use your hands, just use your feet. I think I sprang my stomach. Who would like to go first? <laughs> oh my God, I almost fainted. It's game time and I'm up one. Name something I ain't done. Name a body that's my type. Air Jordan, I'll take flight. I'm next level, I'm French. You are winner, Julia Renee. Hey Buff Babes and Bros and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Julia Renee and I'm an IFBB wellness pro and today we're working out with Savannah Joy Hi. and Kendall. You guys have probably seen Kendall on my YouTube channel a couple of times, but Savannah is new. We go back. We go way back and if you guys want to know even more about that story, we just filmed a podcast that was so long and incredible so that should be out by the time that you see this, but today us three are going to train Savannah on some quads. We're gonna do like a little bit of my workout, a little bit of Kendall's workout, and oh, then yeah. finish with the glute session oh, yeah. that she's gonna take us through. Yeah, I need to hit some glutes, but I could also use some quads. Kendall's. Who better to do it with than this these two? Than some wellness peoples. I was gonna say pros, but sorry. <laughs> so let's get into it. We're gonna start off on the Smith machine. We're doing about 25 pounds on each side just to kind of warm up. So we're gonna do two warm up sets and then we're gonna go into our actual working set. Okay, we're gonna do our working sets now, three working sets, 10 to 12 reps. The first one, we're going to stop too shy away from failure. Um, so I'm gonna start with this and kind of see how it feels. And if I need to do more for the next set, then we'll go up from there. Yeah. There's not enough room for the both of us. Look, if you ever calling me, call me number one. one. Oops, I did it again. Back right there, up. squeeze. Watch the knees caving in. Up. That was like. Oh my god. I almost fainted. Right here. Oh, top of the Yeah. There you are. I'm not getting a lot of reps here. Let me tell you, it does not feel perfect. Okay. We got two plates and a 25 on each side. Mm, we're gonna try, we're going to hit eight reps. The words you say matter. That was nine. I think I sprang my stomach. Is that possible? No, for real, like my, yeah. Whenever, if it's a lift that I'm like not confident with, I more so capitalize on the connection and how well I can control the lift. Cause I would love to do the weight that you do. But as you saw, that one rep was shit. And I was just like, nope, it's not gonna happen. So like, I'm like, some humility in there. Booyah. There's not enough room for the both of us. Look, if you ever calling me, call me number one. one. Oops, I did it again. About to double up. Look, up here. There we go. Up, 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 up. Oh. Okay. We're going to move to a superset now. We're going to do the, uh, what's it called? That thing that you drag? Sled. Yeah. We're going to do sled supersetted with leg extensions. Oh. Uh... We're gonna do three rounds back and forth and then we'll do a drop set on the leg extensions. What do you think? I was thinking if I wanted more quad engagement, I would wanna slowly pull it. Yeah. But I'm down so to- So you're more go. like this instead of like this. Yeah. Correct, like it's like more pull. of a narrow stance and it's thinking about Let's your leg that. extension, your knee extension and trying to only be able to push from that leg that's pressing off. Let's try but that. That's my idea, we don't have to do way. it. I usually just push. Who would like to go first? Me! Hey. Woo. Woo. Woke up feeling bloodthirsty. Yeah. Mm. Never giving up my mercy. Nah. If it's war, let me get it in early. Today I just might make it rain gasoline while the city is burning. You're in a state of emergency and I'm the smile on the face of uncertainty. Hello, my name is your nightmare and I'd like to turn it up, maybe you heard of me. My words will break skin and cut deeper than surgery What follows the sorrow so you should know this ain't a warning man This is a courtesy It can go down whether you want it I'll die before they see me run it My mind won't make it to dinner With a block getting thicker and thicker Burn it all down, turn it through rubble Yeah we're here now, boy you 
in trouble. Do it all again just for the rush. Just for the rush. Okay, just in case you didn't hear us describing it before, we're kind of playing with it to really figure out where you can feel it in your quads the most, because you can easily turn this into a little bit more glutes if you take a wide stance and kind of do little duck wax back. But we found by keeping your feet parallel to your knees and kind of going into a 90 degree angle and then sitting back, boom, taking those little steps, you can really feel it in your quads. Whew. Don't use your hands, just use your feet. We aren't even using any weight and it's really burning. She's gonna do 12 reps for her heaviest and then I'm gonna drop the weight for her lighter and then she's just gonna go as many as she can until failure and then we're gonna drop it again and she's gonna do quad catches. So when she comes up, she's almost gonna catch the quad in the pocket. So boom, catch. Instead of just the squeeze and right down, Bring it up, catch it. It's kind of like a little bit of a bounce. Oh, it fucking hurts so bad. So those for lighter, even lighter, till failure. So let's start with the first. Yes, like a little whoop, boom. Last one. Again, up, again, three, two. Last one, up, up. One, drop it. Drop the weight again, let's do 55. Don't re-rack the weight. Right there, up. Again, up, catch it, boom, down. Up, catch it. Up, catch. Up, and up. Up, five, four, three, up, two, one, boom. Yay! <laughs> that face! <laughs> it was like confusion. Oh, it just shows the vast difference between my quads and her quads. <sighs> and then immediately into those walking things. All right, I want to be as far away from you as possible, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're doing failure this heavy? It's 85. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Just as many as you got. Four. High. <laughs> Three. Two. Up. And I have more. Uh huh. I heard you. <laughs> well, Eminem, take you. I need the verse to start. When being so incredibly quad dominant and like her threshold for failure and even weight. And, you know, it's easy for me to be like, well, I want to try to do the same weight as her. It's just no. I'm like, that's fine. I'm still getting the same amount of stimulation turkey legs <laughs> in the best way possible. For real. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving today. <laughs> I almost spit out my water. That would have been great if you had to do Thanksgiving, dude. <laughs> We're having turkey legs. I'm so sad it's not November. <laughs> We're doing RDLs on a uh, hammer strength. For me, weirdly, I find that by having my grip on the side like this, instead of in front of me with the bar, I feel it actually less in, less in my back. It's so weird, I don't know why. And you can just load the weight on, you don't have to worry about a bar, and it's a little bit easier. And then we're gonna superset it with machine hip thrusts. So, like Savannah was saying, you know what, I might say it wrong, so you say. The stretch and the, and the thing. So this is going to focus on the lengthen position, which is actually, if I remember correctly, I heard from a couple of people that you actually grow from when your muscles, or at least your glutes and your hamstrings, and when they're in the lengthen position, your glutes do. So this is a great exercise to challenge it in the lengthen position when it's stretched. And then when you get to a point to where you get into the contraction, you can really squeeze hard. You're challenged more since you already hit a little bit of fatigue here. You're going to be able to uh, only hit maybe eight to 10 reps here. So I actually need to go heavier in weight. But if you don't have this machine, the trap bar, which is this black bar, there's a lot of other ones um, from like multiple gyms 
I used to do RDLs with the trap bar. If you have a hard time with a standard bar, uh, barbell or dumbbells, trap bar is a great way to start it out because you have a better center of gravity. And I personally was able to do the most weight ever. No, equal weight. <laughs> I was able to do a lot of great weight basically with the neutral grip because it was more centered towards my body. So that's definitely something to try. Again. Come on. Push. <laughs> Seeing the angels. Okay, guys, we are done with our leg workout. How did you guys like it? How do you feel? Oh, I dig it. She goes, oh, I dig it. <laughs> well, I'm tired. <laughs> I feel dead. It was a great one. We did just a handful of exercises and that was enough. Oh yeah, it was uh, a lot. Kendall and I were like, oh, are, are, are we, oh. can we be done now? Yeah, and we're like, I like. I like go up to Julie and I'm like, are you okay with like this being our last exercise, please? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm feeling it already. I'm feeling it already. Well, what we wanted to do is answer a couple of questions from our Instagram poll. So Savannah and I put up a poll and we thought all three of us would answer some of the top ones. Um, so Savannah, go first. Oh, and I just get to choose whatever one you want? Whichever one you want. Um, <laughs> we'll just get the same question that we both got was what's your take on guys approaching girls in the gym? Um, I feel like everybody approaches this differently. Um, I would probably say if I was single, just fucking go for it. Just shoot your shot and just like try to be as like respectful as possible. I am more so if I was hitting on someone, I think it's very similar on like if I was to like try to make friends. Like I see you and I like have to get it out and like say something to you mm. or else I'm just gonna continue to think about it. So, um, you know, if you're confident and you know, you really wanna try to make an advancement, like go for it, but don't take up her time. Just be like, hey, really quickly, wanna introduce myself. I think you're really cute. I know you need to get to your workout, but I'd love to go on a date sometime. I would love it if someone was like more straightforward like that. Like if Scott approached me like that and we weren't dating, I'd be all over it. That's just me. And I think that a lot of girls get really mad when guys do approach them in the gym, no matter how they approach it. But the one thing that I'm thinking about is like, okay, give them a chance. Like, not like you don't have to date them or anything like that, but if they come to you in a really nice and confident way and a respectful way, I always tell them, like if they come up to me and they're, you know, hey, can I get your number? Like you wanna go on a date or something? And the, they said your physique is amazing, like blah, blah, blah. I really think we would get along, whatever. How they approach it, I'm usually like, wow. And I even tell them, I say, you know, sorry, I have a partner that I'm like very committed to. And I was like, but I honestly respect the way that you came up to me. I always tell them that because yep. Mine's the same response. Like, oh. if a dude just has the, the gumption, the balls to like come out and say something, like, that's great. He's getting out of his shell and he's going for it. And I say, I'm flattered. I'm taken though. Like, I hope you have a great rest of your workout. I'm a little more introverted. <laughs> I don't really like being approached, mostly because I think I have a guard up or a wall up, assuming it's gonna be something derogatory since that's like sadly what we get sometimes. My question is why do you automatically assume it's derogatory? Oh. Have you been approached like that? Yeah. Okay, um, I haven't, so that would be new to me. Yeah, I, I haven't experienced that. I think it's just also, I, I think just curated in my head. I had like a lot of guy friends growing up and like sometimes I don't love how they talk about women in the gym. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, if they approach it and like you guys said, is quick, respectful, sweet, I appreciate that. I don't like when they come out like first trying to compliment your body. I don't love that. <laughs> Just licking the yeah, soup. Right? <laughs> I think I think it depends on the case and on the person. I can't do that stuff. Like, guys, like this. The, 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 
Where does this come off of? I, that? I don't know. Where do you guys find these things? Like I've the never whole... seen it in person. I've only seen in yeah. like parodies and stuff. With the TikToks but... when they're like. I'm sure it happens. <laughs> Your well, girls do their own version of that by the like. Yeah. I definitely do my own. Okay, the question that I have is, how do you get past the anxiety to film in the gym? This one is difficult. All three of us have been through this because we now don't have as much anxiety filling in the gym because we're just practice, practice, practice. But the thing is, if you wait for anxiety and fear to go away before you start doing something, you're gonna be waiting for the rest of your life. So you have to do it in the most confident and comfortable way that you can in the moment. If you don't have the most confidence at the beginning, that's okay. That's something that you have to learn and you have to practice. I went from putting my phone up against my water bottle to film and I would do it when nobody was around to having my amazing videographer Ian follow me around with the camera. So this just a progression of building up that confidence and inevitably the anxiety behind it goes away. What do you yeah. guys think? Um, I would think like for me, I'm so pissed that I didn't film more sooner. If you're not gonna get it now, you're never gonna get it. If you don't have the confidence to do it now, you're never gonna get that back, so film. Like nobody's, there might be some like jerks out there that are gonna be like, oh, like this girl's filming. Like, you know, even when we were filming, there was just a couple of instances, but like, honestly, that's gonna happen. They're gonna move on with your day. You're moving on with your day too. And that's memories primarily for me actually is how I view it. No matter what you're filming, it's those memories that you get to look back on. And if you just keep avoiding it and worry about what other people are thinking in that situation and in that moment, you're forever gonna be pissed at yourself that you just didn't do it because you don't think about it after you do it. I agree. I didn't get comfortable filming myself and setting up my tripod, honestly, until recently. And all I can ever think is I wish I started doing this sooner. Yeah. Like I wish, I wish I had like the confidence to do this sooner. And I think the thing that helps me the most is realizing that nobody's really paying attention to you. They're all focused on themselves. They're all focused on their own workout. I hardly notice until I like actually put effort into like look at my surroundings, how many people really do film in the gym. Like you're not the only one wanting to film your workout either. So I think just like fake it till you make it, fake the confidence and eventually it'll become like second nature. Yeah. The memories. Oh, mic drop. You're going to answer or ask the next question. Okay. Yeah. I haven't pre-read, so hold on. I have a plan. What do I do? Um, oh, you sent me one of the ones we already answered. My other one is how to fix lazy glutes. One side activates, the other doesn't. Unilateral workouts is... Oh. Was that your answer? That was my okay. answer. <laughs> she like put a little cue, so sorry. How to fix lazy glutes, one side activates, the other doesn't. Do you guys have an yeah, answer I, first? I mean, like I put for this one, <laughs> the <laughs> unilateral <laughs> movements where you're doing single leg um, options, whether it's like, uh, let's say a single leg split squat, squat that's like glute focused. If you have a lazy glute that doesn't activate as much, this can really help you um, target that one glute so that you can really, really feel it and focus on it so that you're not focusing on two glutes at, I'm like two glutes at one time, two cheeks at one time. It's so weird. Double cheeked up. But then another thing that I do is because obviously you're gonna have a dominant side. For me, it's my right side. So my left glute is a little bit lazier than my right glute. So what I do is I always start Oh, with exactly my left, what I was yeah, say. I start yeah. with my left glute first or my left arm if I'm doing bicep curls because I put more effort. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you're the one that taught me this. I'm not even gonna lie. When we first started working out together, I'm not even gonna lie. Okay, I, I'm just having a little so many flashbacks. Julia, it's yeah. not even fair. <laughs> I'm like, this was my idea, but but it really helps because you guys are going through your set, and obviously, when you get to the second leg, you're like, oh, it's so tiring. So. If your left side's a little slow, start on the left side. So that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, you're able to put all of your energy towards that non-dominant side, and your dominant side is more than likely always going to outshow your non-dominant um, side, so I'm saying dominant a lot. <laughs> but, I mean, if you wanna address that side, you have to address it first. Something I learned recently from a trainer at Collective, actually, was you need to make sure that your hip flexors are fully warmed up and fully stretched because you can't fully contract your glutes if you can't push past 
where your hip flexor is prohibiting you. So maybe you have a tight hip flexor on one side and that's keeping you from being able to contract as hard as the other side. So make sure you're warming up as effectively as you can. Yeah, even just periodically, you don't have to do it all the time, but like seeing, like exactly, like seeing somebody that is like really um, uh, knows in depth about mobility and being able to look into um, deeper things than just addressing with unilateral movements, which can go a certain way, but it can only go so far. Maybe you do actually need to look into things deeper and truly like put some effort towards it and see a professional once twice and then ask them okay you know I've seen you a couple of times what else do I need to do by myself to continue this very smart smart if you have another question for us we'll do probably one more each so this video is not too long no I wanted to answer the food one is like what is your favorite food at the moment doesn't have to be like macro friendly or anything like that it very well can be but I have something that has immediately came to mind, but I want to hear your guys' favorite food, snack, whatever at the my moment. Favorite food right now. Oh my God, okay. Do, can I have two? Yeah. Okay, so one, overnight oats. Two, adult <laughs> Lunchables. Yes! What, are you serious? No, I just love Lunchables. I Go love ahead. them. Sorry. Adult Lunchables. So I make my own Lunchables. I have these like Amazon, super cheap, uh, glass containers and I just fill them with things so I put like little baby red peppers some hummus I oh, put a baby no okay. mine are fun no I make mine <laughs> myself and then I put like two pieces of little non bread for some carbs oh, yeah, put no. some fruit um, protein stick so I get I get everything from it and it's just so much fun it brings me back to childhood but I was never allowed to actually have Lunchables anyway so your parents didn't let you have Lunchables no my mom would make my food my mom was very healthy she was very healthy all That's things were mainly like homemade so thank you mom but yeah adult Lunchables and overnight oats um Hold on, I feel like I need to think. I always have like hyper fixations on food. For most of the last year, it was hummus. Like I was eating a terrifying amount of hummus. Yeah, I think like garlic hummus is my favorite, but I, I like definitely like would go through all of them. Chocolate hummus, have you guys had I chocolate I haven't tried hummus? that one yet. That shit's good. Yeah, oh, Target has one too, I think. No, it's so good. I'm like chickpeas. It's so good. Don't knock it till you try it. Yeah, I need to try it. Um, I don't really have one that I'm like obsessed with right now, but I bought cereal this week and I think that was a great decision. So <laughs> So I'm allergic to gluten, so my options are limited, but right now the Cheerios, but it's like the apple cinnamon yeah. flavor. They're really good. And they honestly are like pretty macro friendly. It's really just carbs. Yeah. Great pre and post workout. What's yours? Oh fuck. <laughs> Um, that was really funny. Scott like really liked plantain chips for a hot minute before we moved before we moved back to Austin. He's like, oh, these plantain chips are so good. And I'm like, yeah, but they don't beat potato chips. And yeah. <laughs> like, because I love chips and I'll like work them into my food if I can every so often. And holy shit, there is this bag that you get from H E B. It's a yellow bag of plantain chips. I know what you which one oh <laughs> man, like I can't wait to have some today. I just think about it constantly as plantain chips. Plantain. That's my mom's thing. I don't like them. Like when my mom's on really? the plane. He eats them. I could eat the entire bag. I don't like them. Oh, and those are actually like relatively macro friendly. Like yes, the what they're like fried. Um, but I mean like just be mindful. But oh, I will say it's very hard to be mindful when it's so it good. It off. Uh, is it my turn to do a question? You yeah. did the food? Okay. I don't have another one, so this is the last one. Unless you want to ask too. My question is, how do you begin to commit to this lifestyle? That's a really good question. Kendall's like, I, I got I think this. it's simple and you just need to start. I think so many people put off starting because they're waiting for the perfect time, the perfect moment, for perfect circumstance, and perfect never comes. So then you're just pushing it off forever. And I think most people's regret with their fitness journey is just not starting sooner. So I think just get started. Just take it little by little. Be really nice to yourself. Just try to build consistency. Um, our recent podcast episode about perfection really hit me because I realized I fall back into wanting every workout to be like an insane, amazing workout. And you're not going to PR every workout. Sometimes you just need to show up and stretch. Sometimes you need to show up and get a pump. Other times you will PR. You will have those insane workouts. But I think don't put pressure on yourself and just begin. That's yeah. like the easiest way. Just freaking start. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think just, are, are you going to say anything no, else? No, I that that? hit what I was going to say. So. <laughs> I think uh, playing off on that is like you just need to play to your um, advantages and to your strengths. Like this is very much in like business that I've heard Scott talk about so much is like 
you need to play to your strengths as much as possible. I think all of us, all of our strengths is like we just loved to train. And so we were able to work off of that. And that's what you can feel really good about. That's what you can progress the most in. And then we had to reel in nutrition one time or another for us. And you just start checking off those boxes. Cool, I finally hit 120 grams of protein. Now I can hit 130. Now I personally hit 165. Woo! So um, yeah, you work up towards that. Um, is the biggest thing is like just play to your advantages and then find what you're not good at and just start from the bottom there. Find what you're not good at and then don't do that thing. <laughs> Honestly, like I mean there's so many so much time. That's why I have Scott to film and do media exactly. for me. Exactly. <laughs> you this is what you do. That's why we have Ian here. It's like you play to your strengths. You know my strength is being the face, being like I, I don't want to be the creative behind making things and let people do like See? what they're good at and it's like there's so much time like especially in school where people are trying so much in school to force you to be good at something that you're probably just not gonna like and probably not gonna do all of school I remember just feeling like such a dummy because school didn't come easy for me I knew at a very young age I ain't going to college if I do something after it's gonna be something that's more creative and that I can do on my own and inevitably I ended up doing something that's completely different so and that didn't happen because I was forced into a box of like going to college because I just knew that wasn't gonna be me Wow so uh, a really quick question were your parents upset that you didn't go to college um my dad I decided that I was gonna go to beauty school, I think, as like a sophomore or a junior. Yeah, that was my aesthetics after I dropped out of college. Yeah, I was, uh, I knew that I was gonna do that. And for, a, yeah. for a minute, I was gonna go to, I got accepted to FIDM, which is like the Fashion Institute, fuck, I forgot, in California, but I was paying for everything myself. So yeah, there was no way that I was gonna be able to afford to move to California. So instead, I went and did beauty school and my mom was a hairstylist, so it made sense. And I've seen her doing it growing up, loved it while I did it, ended up hating it towards the end. I think I, when I met you, you hated it. Oh, I hated it. <coughs> I hated it, yeah. Who is that? I don't know, wave. She's trying to be quiet. Oh, wave to the camera. <laughs> Anyways, what were we talking about? I forgot. Um, getting started, or yeah. committing to this yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I that. Hit it. <laughs> Basically that. Well. I think that's that's pretty good. This could probably give me a long video. Yeah. But anyways, guys, if you guys enjoyed having Savannah and Kendall here, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you go and check them out. Also, go subscribe to both of their channels because both of them need to start posting their videos, and they're not. We're so start. hold them accountable along with me. And as always, guys, I love you all so much, and you are more powerful than you think. Bye!